going all the way back to January, there was the GIMP 2022 annual report. And this contained a very interesting quote. Plans for 2023. GIMP 3.0.0? I should not give dates, so don't take it as a promise. Maybe it's just a foolish dream by a foolish man. I am currently planning GIMP 3.0.0 release in 2023, or at least our first release candidates. Now, considering how many years this has been a work in progress, I did have a little bit of hope, but I wasn't holding my breath. Any number of issues could happen, and it could still be like, you know, two, three, four years away. But recently, one of the biggest changes got crossed off the list. Finally, after years of waiting, being done with GTK2 and finishing the port to GTK3. With the exception of some minor API usage, but no major tasks anymore, the UI is basically done. That doesn't mean that GIMP 3 is out today. There is still quite a bit of work to be done, but considering the UI is done, that's one of the major issues. And one of the other goals, Wayland support, you know, gets much, much easier when you're using GTK3. You don't get Wayland support for free. There are still issues with window management and things like that, but it's going to be way further along than having GTK2 components. Also, the redesign for the API and script slash plugins is still a work in progress, and so is Space Invasion. Space Invasion is basically their code name for improving their color support, so CMYK support and things like that. That's probably going to hold it back the longest, and I hope that if it does get, like, you know, really bad, they actually do just roll out with the updated UI and everything else being done, even if that means the new colors are not going to be supported. Bring that out in 3.1, 3.2, anything like that. I really hope that does not hold it back. And the other thing is less floating selection. This is basically when you copy in an image into GIMP, it's going to be in that weird temporary layer, and then you need to add it into a new layer. Basically getting rid of as many of those as possible and only using them in places where they really need to be used. Right now, that's pretty much just the transform tools. But with the UI basically being done, we could legitimately see GIMP 3.0 this year. Maybe it's just an RC, but maybe it'll actually happen. Now, this work was pretty much completed about a month or so ago, but it's taken a bit of time to actually get into the repo itself. Yesterday, after one plus month of work, I finally got rid of GTK Action and GTK UI Manager Code. These are two very, uh, very deprecated elements that probably shouldn't be in the code base anymore. This was deprecated in 3.10, and this was deprecated also in 3.10. So even though they're not using the latest version of GTK, you don't want to be using an outdated version of the last version. So it's probably best to use things that are current and then go from there. In other words, the end of the port to GTK3. I still have a few bugs and issues to handle before merging my branch into the main source tree. And then a little bit after that, the developer tweeted this as well. And after another month, I merged the branch to our main development branch. The GTK3 port of GIMP is officially finished, apart from minor deprecated API here and there, but no huge tasks anymore. I even already updated the roadmap, which now says port to GTK3 done. Even though it's done, there are still a couple of bugs here and there, like the actual port is done. There's no GTK2 code left. It's just a matter of making everything, you know, stable and ready to use. Now, for any of you out there who like pain, suffering, or testing code, whatever you want to call it, you can very easily go and test out the development build of GIMP. If we go over to gimp.org slash download slash develop, the instructions are all here. Keep in mind, this is 
very unstable and should not be used in a production context. Now that's out of the way, let's have a look. So the latest tagged release is 2.99.14. This is from November of last year. This is not going to have the latest work being done getting all of the GTK3 stuff done. If you go and use this, it's still going to be a work in progress, but if you want to use it, you can just go and download it straight away. I wouldn't recommend doing it like that. My suggestion is downloading the flat pack instead. Now with the flat pack, there are two versions. We have the development flat pack, the unstable version, and the nightly flat pack, the very unstable version. Now the development flat pack is this one right here, if it's going to open. So this is the 2.99.14 release. It's very easy to cause things to break. It's not complete and sometimes might crash a little, but you can use it. <laughs> that was not planned actually. Sometimes, um, bug report prompts just appear. But this is the GTK3 version. You can test out most of the new features. Obviously, being a couple months old is not going to be as new as it possibly could be. Um, but you can test out things like multi-layer selection, multi-layer deletion, and all of this fun stuff that is being added. But if you want to have the absolute latest version, you can grab the nightly build instead. Now, when I tried to install the nightly build, it didn't work which is what makes sense for a nightly build. Sometimes that might happen, but this is also a flat pack, so it's not going to affect your regular version. It is also not available on FlatHub, so you will have to download it from this link here and then install it from the package ref. It's the same way you'd normally install it, just flat pack install, and then instead of something from FlatHub, you just pass in the file path to the flat pack ref. And for those of you who don't like flat packs, you can go and download the source code directly, either grabbing one of the tagged releases or going over to the repo and just downloading the latest Git source code and just seeing what happens. As I said, I would highly recommend that you don't do that. Now, I am really excited for GIMP 3. Like, there is a reason why I want this to be done this year. Even just for some of the basic stuff, like multi-layer selection existing in GIMP. People have wanted this feature since basically the first version. Since anyone saw that it could be done in Photoshop, people wanted it in GIMP. And it's just not been there throughout the entire life cycle of GIMP 2. I have no idea why it was never added. But then after GIMP 3 comes out, there's other things on the roadmap that are awesome as well. Like non-destructive layer types, non-destructive filters, animation work, which isn't really my thing, macros and script recording. Like this stuff isn't coming in GIMP 3, but is going to be coming after that GIMP 3 release. Like this is stuff that's not going to even basically really get much work done until GIMP 3 is actually ready. Then other things can be worked on. And finally, it can become like a good image editor. Critter is such a great project because Critter actually has funding. Like this is one of the big problems that GIMP has. GIMP is a very popular application, but just does not have that funding behind it to really push it in the direction it needs to go. If it just had some big companies behind it, like Critter does, I could imagine GIMP actually competing with things like Photoshop. As it stands, it's just an open source image editor that at some point is going to have a lot of things you just want it to have. Also, other things like the new plugin infrastructure, where right now plugins do exist, but there's going to be a new plugin format called Gex. So the way plugins currently work is say you want to add a new brush, for example, you need to add that brush into the brush location. With this new plugin format, everything is just going to work consistently. You just add in the plugin and then the brushes go where the brushes go, the themes go where the themes go, and all of the other stuff just goes where it needs to go. So it's a lot simpler of a format for a user to work with. So hey, if you're excited for GIMP 3, I would highly recommend you go and support the project, but also just keep an eye on what's happening on the roadmap. Occasionally things are going to be marked off, and as things get marked off further and further and further, we get 
closer and closer and closer to GIMP 3 being a thing. Every single day we inch tiny, tiny little bits closer and hopefully this year, hopefully something can happen, at least an RC. And you know what? If an RC comes out, I'm probably just going to run the RC. I know it's still technically not ready if it's an RC, but it's basically done if it's an RC. So let me know what you think. Do you care at all about GIMP 3? Do you run GIMP? Do you use Critter? Do you use Photopea? Do you use a Windows machine and run Photoshop? I would love to know. And yeah, I'm excited. Maybe you are as well. I don't know. So let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of uh, this button, <laughs> These amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrabs, the Liberape, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... GIMP needs funding. Go fund it. Yeah. Bye. I'm out.